Good morning. Good morning. May God's blessing be with us as we journey in the presence of the Lord on this the day that our God has made. Uh, a couple of announcements I want to share with you today. Um, we are going to begin the process of moving closer to normal. By today, uh, we have uh, a liturgist and uh, there are responsive uh, things and you can participate in the responsive readings if you have your mask on. And uh, so, so we're just going to make that change. I want to make it clear. We've got a couple of responsive things in the Lord's Prayer. Um, we, we're kind of shifting to the place where we have a liturgist and you can participate in that way. The announcements are Monday, Thursday at 7 o'clock here uh, for a meaningful Monday, Thursday service. Uh, there is a donation being collected to uh, provide Easter meals uh, for the food pantry people, the people that come to the food pantry. Next week will be the one great hour of sharing offering, correct? It'll be collected next week, so be prepared for that. And I believe today you can still order an Easter lily, is that correct? Or yeah, so you can today still so you can still order an Easter lily um, uh, and see Cheryl for that. Um, are there any other announcements that need to come before us? join me in the call to worship. <coughs> Lord, you come humble riding on a donkey. We greet you. You are acclaimed by the crowd. You are killed by the children. We cheer you. You come into the city of peace, proclaiming peace. We salute you. We bow before you. You are Christ our Lord. You give majesty a new face. Bring your people a new hope for all those who long for redemption. We now have a new song to sing. With our voices, with our heart, we shout. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of this day, and we ask, Lord, that you would shower that blessing into our hearts, that the Holy Spirit might move us in this time of worship. In the name of our Savior, we ask your blessing. Amen. Uh, now, by way of announcement, uh, we are going to sing Hosanna, La Hosanna, not our uh, uh, I. We're still going to have those singing restrictions, but the liturgy can participate in but the the title of the hymn is incorrect on the first one there. All right, so going, I want to explain. We're having a procession of palms. So there are going to be some children coming down the aisle waving palm branches, um, recognizing Jesus' entry into the holy city, Jerusalem. So let us reflect on the words of number 88, Hosanna, La Hosanna. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now we come to Team Jesus, and uh, part of the reason that I ask the children to uh, drop these palms and parade in our procession of palms is for us to reflect on what happened on the first Palm Sunday. The, 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 all of the followers of Jesus gathered in Bethany and came down the side of the Mount of Olives and they grabbed palm branches from the side of the road and they waved the palm branches. And what did that mean when they waved palm branches? It meant that they wanted to, they were happy and they wanted to uh, signal joy. But the other thing that we need to know is that was a way that any king would be ushered into the holy city. They would grab, grab palm branches and lay the palm branches and the cloaks on the road so that the chariot of a king could go over that, uh, that uh, bed of palm branches and cloaks. But in this case, it was Jesus who was proclaiming himself to be king, and the crowd was proclaiming him to be king, and he was riding a donkey signaling that his kingship was a little different than the average king. But it created a stir in the holy city because somebody who the leaders didn't think should be called a king was, be called, was, was being called a king. And so that's why I asked the children and their teachers to, to come down the center aisle and drop these palm branches there so that uh, we would remember that Jesus announced his kingship on the very first Palm Sunday. And that's what we celebrate today, that Jesus' kingship is alive in our hearts and in our lives so many years later. So I want you all to take one of these palm branches when you go, and let's wave them now, though, so that we can proclaim that Jesus is our king as well. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of your love, for the wonderful nature of your presence among us, for your kingship in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethany and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village of head of you, and, you imme and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and it will send it back. Here, immediately, they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the field. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. our hands of prayer. Living Lord of truth and love, we come humbly before you knowing that your grace and mercy show us a light, especially on this day when we come before our Savior and when we ask the Savior's blessing as we journey with him, ready to take our place beneath the cross of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.
Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. These are the words of Jesus' followers. They used these words to usher in the one who was their king into the holy city, Jerusalem. Through the years, the church has come to know the Sunday before Easter as Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday remembers this very event when Jesus approached the golden gate of the holy city and entered triumphantly, proclaiming himself and his followers, proclaiming him king. So on this Sunday, we join our hearts together and try to envision this unlikely ragtag band of followers, fishermen and common people. Not only the 12 disciples, but the multitudes of, of, di of a diverse group of people who had gathered to follow Jesus, who had taken notice of the ministry of Jesus. They are now at the gates of the holy city. And the people used a tradition, which was often used to recognize that a king was entering into the holy city. Those palm branches and cloaks in the road. Jesus was now at the peak of his popularity. He had crowds that were following him everywhere. And that whole crowd boldly proclaimed on this day by waving those palm branches and shouting their praise. They were proclaiming that Jesus was their king. And their king was not named Herod or Pilate or Caesar. Their king's name was Jesus. As they waved the palm branches and they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of our father, David. So why did they use these words to proclaim his entry into the city? Well, for any king to have authority, they must have a royal line. So they were proclaiming David as Jesus' royal line, Hosanna to the son of David, pointing out that he was king. In John, it says, the followers didn't understand the kingship that they were proclaiming just on that day. In fact, it's true, they only later understood what the donkey meant. Because normally a king would ride into the city on a chariot. But Jesus was a different sort of king, a servant king. The donkey symbolized Jesus' submission to God the Father, which would be played out in the events in the next several days. This band who gathered on that day and dared to envision that kingship, they had a different mind. They didn't envision the road to Calvary. Their vision was an earthly chain of command that would transform the tyranny of the Roman Empire to a kingdom where love and peace ruled the day, much like Jesus had shown them in his earthly ministry. What they didn't understand on the first Palm Sunday was that entering the golden Gate into the city of Jerusalem. The gate they were entering was much grander and much more glorious than the Golden Gate, and the Golden Gate is glorious. But the path that Jesus would take as he entered the holy city was a path leading to the cross, where his purpose, given to him by God, would be fulfilled. Proclaiming more glory than any king on earth could. A 
accomplishing God's purpose, which many earthly kings, that was the furthest thing from their mind. They wanted to accomplish their own purposes of power and wealth. <coughs> In the accomplishment of God's purpose, as we will witness over the next days, humanity would have a vision of Jesus' true kingship. Not a kingship based on tyranny and oppressive uh, and earthly wealth and power, but rather a kingship, which is the reason we gather and worship today. A kingship based on love and peace and mercy, forgiveness. So let's take a step back today, looking at the palms in the eye and thinking about the entry into the holy city. The gate entered today by the reading of the scripture is not really the golden gate in Jerusalem, but rather a heavenly gate, which opens our heart to all the possibilities that come from the fact that Jesus accomplished the purpose that God had given him to accomplish at Calvary. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, open our hearts to all the wonderful good news of Christ's love inside our hearts. Help us to embrace the kingship of our Savior and remember the way it unfolded. As we enter this holy week, help us to hear the word of God and to tune out the words of the world so that we might be his faithful servants. In the name of our Savior, we ask your blessing. Amen.
part of what we feel in our hearts is when we humble ourselves before God and witness the purpose that he accomplished. And we do that especially well when we confess our sins before the Lord. So we stand, please, and with our whole hearts, let us use the unison prayer that is printed in your bulletin to humble ourselves and acknowledge the wonderful, noble purpose of our Savior. Let us join in the prayer of confession together. O Lord, who on this day entered the city that you declare as the holy city of God, but rejected you, we confess that our wills are as rebellious as those citizens of Jerusalem. Our faith is often more full than substance. Our hearts are in need of cleansing. Have mercy upon us, Son of David, Savior our lives. Help us to lay at your feet all the treasures of our heart. Help us to trust you to forgive what is sinful, to heal what is broken, and to recognize your desire to receive us as your own. To the glory, praise, and honor of your holy name, let us join now in a silent prayer of confession. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all of our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us unto eternal life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please remain standing as we reflect on the words of uh, the hymn of glory, law, and honor.
The second scripture that we share today comes from the Gospel of John, and we are going to share from the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John, and we will share verses 1 to 11. Hear now the blessing of God's word before us. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for the master, for Jesus. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of her pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always will have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Here ends this blessed reading coming today from the Gospel of John. It is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, open our hearts to the wonderful blessing of your love, which we know is always before us. Help us to understand the love in the heart of our Savior as he headed toward the cross. Help us to understand the glory of his saving love and the redemption that comes to our hearts because of the glory of his sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello there. I am Mary. I want to tell you about an event that changed my life forever. I know that you have all heard of the Master, Jesus, the one who raised Lazarus from the dead. Well, on one occasion, not, told, not long ago, we were staying in Bethany during the Feast of the Passover, and Bethany is just up the hill from the Holy City. The Master and the number of the Master's followers were at the home of a man called Simon the Leper. Now, I loved the Lord so much, and I was so thankful for the way that he had changed my life so far. I was walking down the streets of Bethany, and I was right near the home of Simon the Leper. And all of a sudden, the Lord moved in my heart. I had with me an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume that had come from the wealth of my family. So I decided I could show Jesus just how much I loved him and how much I believe in the words that he had spoken to us all through the weeks and months that we had followed. I could do that by offering this gift to him. I didn't even hesitate. That was God's call for my life. Right here and right now, that was my purpose. In the name of the Lord. 
It was a chance for me to show how much that I loved the Master. Right then, I have to tell you, it felt like my purpose, but it also felt like God had some special purpose in this offering that I was going to bring to, in this act of love that I showed toward the Master. I walked into the house and Jesus was there. He was reclining at table with some of his followers. I didn't really even notice who was there at the time, to be honest with you. It felt to me as though it was just me and the master. I opened the jar of the perfume and I poured the perfume out onto his feet and I dried that perfume, I rubbed that perfume in with my hair. Now, normally, with this idea of anointing, you would just use a little bit of that perfume. After all, this perfume came at a very high price. Only a king or a high priest would use the whole jar at the same time. But I thought to myself, the master is my king. He is the only high priest to me. So why shouldn't I give a gift worthy of such a wonderful king? So I gladly poured out the whole jar. It was an expression of my love toward the master. There was joy in my heart that I can't even explain in this act of giving toward the Master. Now ordinarily, expensive gifts didn't matter to the Master. But like I told you, this gift seemed to have a higher purpose beyond just my love for my friend. Only a short time after I poured out all that perfume out of the jar, I heard murmuring from the people in the room. They were standing behind me. And then Judas spoke up, as he was inclined to do often. He spoke up and he said, why this waste? This perfume could have been sold for a high price and the proceeds could have given, been given to the poor. Well, let me tell you, honestly, I know Judas didn't care about the poor. He was just interested in having more money in that little bag he carries around so that he would have more wealth to line his own pockets. But I didn't really pay any attention to Judas or any of the others. I knew that there would be some people who would cringe when I decided to, to anoint the master with all of this perfume, but I didn't really care. The Holy Spirit's calling for me seemed way more important to any of the murmuring that was going on behind me. But then, the master spoke up. He said, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you, the master said, but you will not always have me. And later he said to them, Mary, has done a beautiful thing for me. To be truthful, I only understood later exactly what all of that meant. But I knew that whatever he meant, and however my gift had furthered God's purpose, it was worth it. It was worth it to me. I had taken a chance to offer a gift of love unto the Lord. I 
have taken a chance to offer a gift of love unto the Lord. I had answered the Spirit's call to give my heart to my King and my High Priest. There were times in my life when I would not have dared to take that risk. And because I did take this risk, my life will never be the same again. How about you? Is the master your king? What gift would be too expensive for you to offer unto him? He deserves a beautiful gift from you. I tell you what, the gift that the master values most of all is your love. So offer him all of the love in your heart. And after that, the Holy Spirit will take care of the rest. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, may your blessing accompany us this day, the day that you have created to give us an opportunity to honor and glorify the name of the Lord. May his blessing accompany us, one and all, so that grace and mercy and peace might be in our hearts, particularly in this week that lies ahead when we journey together toward the cross of Jesus. In our Savior's name we pray. Amen. Let's join now and reflect on the words of the hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? Robert DeVries, 
Clint Dykoff, Gary Lugstedt, Dylan Preston, and Jackie Williams, and all those who are affected by COVID still, and who uh, have lost loved ones, and who are shut in and isolated because of it. Are there any other joys or concerns that should come before us? Rachel? Okay, um, I just want to tell you guys that um, last week on Thursday, I went to my dentist appointment, and um, they checked my x-ray, and they said I have uh, four wisdom teeth, so I'm not quite sure when my surgery will be yet, but praise for me about my wisdom teeth is because I, it's been driving me crazy. So I think you said you're going to have oral surgery soon, correct? Uh, yes, well, well, you might have to wait and see. Yeah, so uh, uh, let's be, with, be in prayer for Rachel as she prepares for possibly having oral surgery. Others? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Living Lord, Lord of love and truth, we ask that your blessing might come into our hearts this day as we recognize the kingship of our Savior and as we recognize the glory of the living sacrifice that our, that our Savior have made, we ask that you would be with us as we humbly bow before you. We ask that you be with Joe Roberts and Nancy as they deal with the high blood pressure and other issues that Joe has had over the last several months. Just care for them. We ask that you continue to be with uh, Annette Merchant as she recovers from the procedure that she had. Again, uh, be with uh, Judith, Dorothy's sister, as she recovers too from her surgery. Just watch over these, your children, that they might know of your love, that they might feel the uplifting of your spirit and know that your hand is always outstretched. We ask that you be with uh, Emma's friend Martha as she deals with cancer and the treatments and the uh, side effects of that. We ask that you just watch over her, hold her up and bless her, and minimize that suffering that comes. We ask that you be with Ellen's friends, Dave and Carol. Uh, we ask that you just grant them your spirit's blessing so that each might know that they are walking in the light of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask also that you would be with Robert DeVries and Clint Dykoff and Gary Lovestead. Just wrap your arms around these and all of your children that uh, your never failing spirit might help each one of these and all of us to see it through another day. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to walk with Dylan Preston and Jackie Williams. Uh, wrap your arms around, hold them up right in the palm of your hand so that uh, your light might shine on their path and they might see healing and they might see the assurance of your steadfast love always in their uh, life. We ask, Lord, that you would be uh, present with the ministry of this congregation and all of its members. We ask that as we make contributions for uh, people to have a decent meal at Easter time, that you would empower that ministry of the food pantry to carry through so that that outreach might be an expression of your love and our love toward all of those in need in our community. We ask that as we prepare for Holy Week and Easter, you might help us not to take those times and opportunities for granted, but that we might truly understand the kingship of our God that redeems us and grants us salvation unto all eternity. Lord, we ask that you be with all of those affected by COVID. Just care for our spirits as we try to move toward normal. Those seeking shots, give them the, the right avenue to follow. We ask that you be with all of those who are uh, isolating and still being shut in. Just uh, help us to remember cards and texts and phone calls and help them to feel the outreach of love that comes from the people of this congregation. Be in our community. Be with all of the victims of recent shootings that, that the families who have lost loved ones might be held up in this tragic uh, sequence of events. We ask that you be in our country, be in our world, so that your peace might reign. And Lord, now we pray the prayer our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. <clears throat> Let's wait on the Lord now as we dedicate the offering that comes before us this week. Let's see how Lord 